Hey yo everyone, Unfit Chaos here, and let's get to talking about those Simichian Paladins, those upgrades for your men-at-arms that are coming in Season 5. Let's get going. All right, let's get into it. Disclaimer time. This is from the Season 5 preview event put on by MyDoc Games. I am a content creator for MyDoc Games, so I am giving this to you because they gave me access. Think of that what you wish. But today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the Simichian Paladins, those upgrades for your men at arms that are coming in season five. And if you want to stick around, I will be doing a giveaway. So watch to the end to find out about that. So let's talk about these units. You do obtain them through the unit challenges where you have them as a four star unit. So these, as we mentioned, are an upgrade to your men at arms. So you have to go through the upgrade promotion process I will put a card up there to link to the video where I talk about how that's going to work. For now though, you unlock stage one in the tree for your unit challenges and you will obtain a men at arms contract. This will allow you to unlock it in the honor tree if you do not. If you do, however, have the men at arms unlocked, you will obtain 32 men at arms kits, 50 unit medals, and an extra barracks slot. So I personally would, if you have the honor, unlock them, do not do anything unlock this that way you get your kits to save you bronze for actually getting the unit in your barracks and you have the unit medals to upgrade it that's the way i would go as far as tier two you're going to get more unit medals as well as a doctrine that increases their piercing damage by 90 not bad not bad at all more unit kits and then the actual unit upgrade out of tier three so as far as this goes it allows you to do the promotion process on your men at arms and obtain the new simichian paladins from the last one, you do get more unit kits and a Doctrine. This reduces your recovery cooldown by two seconds. We'll get into it in a bit. I probably personally would not run it. Uh, it's not a bad Doctrine, and if you have nothing better, it is definitely good. But we'll get into a second why I personally am probably not going to end up running it on my unit. So let's get into the actual unit itself. So you're going to have your upgrade after you apply the promotion, and you will have the unit in your barracks. Paladin has a couple options to go with it. First off, let's get into Doctrines. It's a lot of the same stuff that you get from Men at Arms. Typical piercing, slashing, blunt. It's all the same kind of stuff. Breakthrough Doctrines, Assassination Doctrines. Nothing too special other than the two that you will unlock from the tree that are specifically for them. If we get into the actual Veterancy, you have two trees to choose from. They're pretty straightforward. The top tree is for the recovery, which we'll talk about with traits, and the bottom tree is going to be a general defense tree. Definitely, as you see with this unit, the one that I'm playing with at the moment. So let's get into actual stats. I have put up on front of the screen for you the stats for this unit when you first get it with nothing on it. As you can see, it's uh, fairly respectable. The health isn't too bad, and your unit size is pretty decent. Stats are about a tier four. Nothing too special for a tier 4 shield unit, but let's get into these stats now if you go with the top tree. The big thing with the top tree, as I mentioned, is going to be that recovery, so the stats do not get too much of a buff. You get a bit of health, and you get a little bit of extra crit value, and a little bit of piercing armor penetration. Really, it's not bad of a unit when you go top tree, and its primary purpose is going to be healing. Now let's get into the bottom tree. Bottom tree is where you're going to see a huge thing. Lots of defenses added. This is the defense tree, and as such, you get a lot of defense capability that makes it very tanky. You also get reduced damage taken from the rear, which is helpful. It's all about those defenses. The fact that you get 712 slashing defense and on top of that 841 piercing defense is immaculate. All the stats that I'm showing you are without doctrines as well. This is purely by maxing out the unit. I definitely am going to probably go bottom tree. So let's get into the actual things that you get, though. So let's get into it. You get health right away, no matter which tree you choose. If you go top, you get increased block by 40. You get the reduced charge cooldown by two seconds, which is nice. You also get the piercing armor penetration by 5% stack three times. You also get your battle prayer cooldown reduced by two seconds, increased health by 3%. You also get the cooldown by three seconds on your charge again, critical value by 4%. And the last thing is reducing your battle prayer cooldown by six seconds. So as you can see, it's mainly charge and healing that you get out of that top tree. For the bottom one, you get level increasing piercing damage by 3%. You get your increased in piercing defense. Each level reduces range damage taken by 5%. You get increased slashing defense by 3%. You get your increase in piercing armor penetration by 5%. You get your blunt defense by 3%. 
you get your reduction in damage taken from the rear attacks by 5%, as well as increase in all defenses by 10%. It's a very tanky tree on the bottom tree. Personally, I'm going to run that bottom tree because all those defenses make the unit very effective at holding out and taking things down. The top one, primarily you get that charge, which the charge is highly effective with these guys. It does a lot of damage and we saw it annihilate quite a few units, but the heal is not really that impressive. And we're gonna get into why as we go through traits. First off, these are some Achean troops, just similar to the stalwart. They are slow. If you're in V formation, so the attack at will formation, they slow down extremely when they get close. This does mean that ranged units can run away if microed, and that does mean that they're not going to be able to chase anything very effectively. They do have paladin combat method. This means that they are few troops or even closer to matching them in melee. They're just very effective melee units. They have blessed. So this allows it to have the battle prayer, which allows it to heal itself and immediately restore a small amount of health on nearby allies. They are resistant to flame. So you do have pretty effective resistance against fire attacks. They do also have weak spot. So in the rear, they take more damage. Here's the actual commands. Battle prayer. This is actually a mini longsword heal. So you restore 5% health on the unit as well as nearby allies. Then the unit gets a 250 health immediately applied on itself for the next 15 seconds. It's a pretty decent heal. The thing is the cooldown is very long. You're talking like a minute. This is something that you would use outside of combat. You could hit it in combat, but what we found out is that the animation and the time it takes for them to trigger the actual prayer of healing it's just not very effective. That's time that you're taking damage because you don't have your defense up. And it's also time that you're not dealing damage. It's not an effective enough heal to be used in the middle of combat. It's cooldown is really long and it's not super effective and it leaves you vulnerable during the animation. This is something after a fight or before you immediately engage to try to top you up and keep you going. They do have a shield rush. It's really good. It's a lot of damage. Uh, you'll see later when we show you some of the unit matchups that it did a lot. They're a very good charge unit. You have your standard formations, your dispersed, your block, and your shield formation, just like the men-at-arms versions. So overall, the unit's a charging, self-healing, highly defensive shield unit. Very, very good. I highly recommend this unit. This is my go-to unit for season five. I'm going to try to get these as quick as possible and get them leveled up as soon as possible. How good? Let's see. Let's play some uh, unit matchups. All right, this time I'm not gonna XV XV at all. Yeah. Uh, looks like you have the upper hand. God, they just killed so many of them. Oh, My counter attack's going off, but it's not. It's not doing much. You're still gonna crush him. So Zop's still the uh, kind of best counter. And they're all gone. Just the, the I like had a third of them survive the initial impact. Just the charge. Yeah. Because if they were behind like a gate or something, you wouldn't be able to charge them, right? I don't think they're going to take any damage here. <laughs> Not a... S oh, oh, someone took a damage. One guy took damage. <laughs> that one guy, oh man, he's got a scratch. So Azops oh, no. ripped these guys last season, and now they're ripped even more. Oh. Well, don't charge. I mean, they didn't die, though. No fear. Wow, you took one out and almost took another or two Pretty out. Pretty good. And then the counter. Better. Uh, yeah, I mean, I lost four and the fifth one's almost dead. So Better. you actually are more likely to survive by charging them. Attack! 
Ah, they do not block while charging. That's not good. No. But they're still destroying. <laughs> yeah. The moment I hit V and uh, it took them a while. Like, they were all really hurt. And it still took the freaking bikes forever to start killing them. I right? might still win if I pop the heal, <laughs> oh my maybe. God. No, I'm gonna this lose. Is, this is with increased damage from my from my glaive as well. Yeah, so you had increased damage. And on top of that, we did the worst case scenario. And I technically, I think still, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, I still win. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. This is volley What fire. the heck? Is... You want to attack? No, there's too far away. Do charge again? Destroy them. Yeah, the charge will kill him. We can cancel this. And then press again. Units assemble. Attack. They're doing a yeah. As soon as they engage damage. with that, they're Gucci. Because this is like, you're being berated and you're waiting for your your charge to come up just so that you can do this, like... Or you're covering some units, you know, let's just say. Oh my gosh. Ooh, one guy got hurt. Yeah, I got one number though. Oh, another guy got hurt. So as you can see, these guys are very, very good. They didn't do very well matched up against cavalry. A lot of units don't. They're not a shield wall. They're not a pike unit. But otherwise, if it's an infantry, these guys for the most part win. They are highly effective. They're highly effective at taking out pikes, spears, pretty much anything we matched them up against, they did very well. Their defense is ridiculously high. They could hold formation against some of the highest damage dealing units in the game. Tercios, your Imperial muskets, they are going to probably be the stars of season five as they are very good all arounders. So I highly recommend that you get a hold of them and definitely play around with them. They are going to be an excellent unit that we will probably see all throughout the season once they are available because they are just such good all around units. Good damage, good defense. So I hope this video helped you out at getting a look at the Symmagean Paladins. I did mention that there will be a giveaway, so let's get right into that. Please comment down below what you're looking forward to in Season 5 and what you are not looking forward to in Season 5 as well, so we get a good idea of what's going on out there. If you comment down below, I will go ahead and randomly pick a winner on the 15th, so a couple days after the new season comes out, and that winner will obtain 30 days of premium time to win you do have to play on a My.Game server, because it is a my.games code. So make sure that you are playing on NA or European servers. If you want to keep the conversation going, go ahead, comment below for that giveaway, or just in general, or the Discord, or join one of my Twitch streams at 12.30 a.m. Eastern, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hope to hear from you all, and I hope to see you on the battlefield. Yes! Back up, back up, back up! Oh! Yes! <laughs>